I'm back working on a variation of a turbine design that I came up with about 30 years ago. Originally I called it a pressure to torque turbine. I thought that described it pretty good. But right now I'm going to change the name and call it a rotating flow turbine. I think that describes it better because it takes a straight flow, changes it into a rotating flow, and then it extracts the power out of a rotating flow as a medium is forced back towards the center of the rotor and out the bottom. And in this variation that I'm working on right now, it's a fluid motor. I got it hooked up to a laundry tub faucet so it gets some water pressure on it. And that's what makes it spin. And now I'll go over that uh, variation of the design so you can see how it works. I wanted to be able to view what was happening in one of these rotating flow turbines. So I made myself one out of a transparent food container. And that's what this is here and another metal lid off another container to separate this this big metal piping structure on the bottom that's just for support but as you can see too that the supply pressure pressurized water is through the bottom of this turbine too and it goes up to that T then out to two arms where I have a nozzle drilled in the ends of these arms and the water will spray out these nozzles and start flowing in a circular pattern around inside this container, this uh, turbine. And then as the water makes its way to the exit, if you look in here, I got some wooden blades that go towards the center and that rotating flow will be pushing up against these blades causing this rotor to build up torque and spin as it makes its way out through the exit. And this is just a very inexpensive build. It's made for demonstration and for viewing and to study what's happening as this is working. If I'm going to build one where I want some real output, I'll probably build it out of steel. But this is, works good for demonstration and it's very inexpensive. And when I make a build like this, I like to use these uh, wheelbarrow bearings. These are very inexpensive. They're not precision or anything, but this one here has a 5 8 inch bore. And it so happens that half inch pipe fits right inside there because the outside diameter of this pipe is 5 8 So if you want an axle that water can flow right through, this works pretty good. And I'll, I'll hook this back up to the faucet on the sink and we'll spin it up. Now i got to hook back up to the laundry tub faucet and I'll turn it on and let it spin up. See the water just rotating around in a circle there while I'm holding on to the rotor. Things are straining. Let it go. Yeah. It up. The holes, these nozzle holes, are only a quarter of an inch, so it's not getting a whole lot of water out. It does build up some drag there as it spins. Those pipes don't need to be that big. And they probably don't even need two of them. So it builds up a pocket of air up above here. It should be pressurized a little bit as trying to force more water in the rotor. And the bottom half 
of this turbine is acting like a centrifugal pump, so that's forcing water out to the edge, and the pressure is pushing it down towards the center down there. So they're kind of acting against each other, and when you put a load on there, it drains out, and then it can start filling back up. I'm pressing down on the top right now, holding it. But that's the operation. It's just a really a simple build, a very simple design. It's kind of fun too. I get a kick out of this stuff. So you can't see in that bottom half. Good. In another video, I had an air turbine version of this. And with that one, I could operate it horizontally because that air could be exhausted horizontally out the end easy. But when I'm using a fluid like water, I need to have that exit port on the bottom in order for that water to drop out of there easy enough. Otherwise, you might have problems. And some people say, well, this is kind of acting like a Tesla turbine. In a way it is because the exhaust on a Tesla turbine is in the center of the turbine like this one. But what's different is that this whole housing turns with the rotor so you don't get all that friction between the housing and the rotor. I get some friction with that nozzle sticking out on the end towards the turbine but not as much as on a Tesla turbine. So I think that's an advantage. In the future I will be building another one of these, a bigger one, made out of stronger materials I can take a load off of. But this is what I have right now, so I hope you enjoyed what you see in this video, Now I'll catch you next time.